Hello all of you beautiful people. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. It's a nice day outside. It's going to be hot as hell, just like it was yesterday. So uh, I think this video is going to be called something. It's another saying that my mom always used to have. She's like, it's easy to catch a man. Or what did she always say? It's easy to catch a man, but not so easy to keep a man. And that is very, very true. So here's the thing that you guys have to know. There's a big, huge difference between male and females. As we all know, as we know, we are two completely different species, right? The most important thing, though, about men that is really different about women, except, you know, except for the obvious, is the fact that men are very visual beings. And I am going to make use of a couple of tools today uh, playing with my editing software and hoping it would work. And I will be putting inserts in the video. I will do, it, do these clips. I've never done that before, so I got pictures and everything, and I'm going to be inserting them right after each segment. So the most important thing we have to know with this video, okay, to keep the flame in your marriage going, is the fact that men are visual beings, okay? If they weren't... Um, Pornography wouldn't have been such a big thing. <laughs> I mean, they would have gone bankrupt a long time ago. Okay? Um, so the first thing is, number one, men are visual beings, and here comes the visual. So the next step is uh, physical looks. What happens to women, most women, or what do I see in a lot of marriages happen to women, okay? Before you get married, you're dating this guy, he takes you out, he comes over for a visit, you go visit him, and what is the first thing that you do when you know you're going to see your man, okay? The first thing is, you friggin' pamper yourself. You make yourself pretty, you make yourself smell pretty, you put your makeup on, you do your hair, you know, all of those things, that's what you do. Um, and then the guy comes and he sees a part of you which is your persona, the thing that you are portraying yourself to be, right? Now people, um, if you change your whole persona after you get married, then you were kind of fake advertisement, like one of my subscribers said, it's fake advertisement, right? So if you go through all the trouble of looking beautiful before you get married and then letting yourself completely go after you get married, that doesn't say much about you, okay? In fact. I feel sorry for the husband, like that is not right, <laughs> you know, you guys have to think about this, okay, even uh, especially with people who are, are, are homemakers, okay, lots of women get married and they keep on going into the workplace, so we've got two categories of people here, okay, and even the people that work um, kind of uh, um, break the same rules, like they, they, you know, you would get a female, now first of all, before you get married, most of you work, blah, 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 you look pretty on a daily basis, you wear pretty clothes, you go to work, you come back, blah, 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 right? So, and, and, and so then you get married. Now, half, say, half or this, the, the amount of people that uh, actually get, become homemakers, all of a sudden they become sloppy. Uh, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. They become sloppy. They don't do the hair because why? They're not going out. They don't put their makeup on and because why? Who's going to see them? They don't wear pretty clothes because why? Okay? So then you get the other half of women who work and they go out to work and they dress and dolly themselves up to go to work but then when they come home, off goes all the dolliness. So they wash the face, they put the hair up in a ponytail, they wear the biggest, ugliest, um, most comfortable um, sweat, uh, uh, sweats that they can find around the house. So their husband comes home from work, he doesn't see the beautiful girl that went to work that everybody else saw. He sees the girl who has no makeup on, ponytail, and the sloppy, sloppy clothes or whatever, right? Okay, so... I'm going to ask you this question, and then I'm going to do my little insert. It's not going to be the idiot box, but right after this, this is segment number two. Um, these are the pictures. So what do you look like on a daily basis? What does your husband see when he comes home from work, and what does he see on weekends? Does he see these? If that is what he sees on a daily basis, and if that's what he sees on weekends, then people, uh, chances are your flame is going to be burnt out in the first year of your marriage, okay? So, now we're in the third segment of the marriage. So, this is something that you guys have to think about too, that a lot of you, I, I mean, a lot of you are going to comment and agree with me and say, yeah, you know, this and this, but I want you guys to, there's, there's a little, a couple of things that you guys might have missed, okay? 
um, I've spoken to one lady, or a friend of mine actually, and she said, well, luckily she doesn't have a problem because her husband, you know, works in a male environment with, where there's only males and blah, 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 blah. Surprise, surprise, people. Surprise, surprise. Um, I'm going to yet again make use of uh, visuals to just show you guys what happens when your husband drives to work, okay? For those of you who have the excuse of, well, it doesn't matter what I look like because my husband doesn't see any other women at work, okay? On his way to work, getting in his vehicle from the car, going to work. This is what he sees. And he gets bombarded by images like this every single day of his life. Okie dokie. Now that you've seen the pictures and the inserts of what your husband gets bombarded with every single day when he drives off to work, uh, does that make you think a little bit? Hmm. <laughs> Remember that men are visual beings. Men's uh, vision will automatically go to those billboards and boards. Not the same. Like it will flash. And a, a picture, okay, you only have to see thing, a thing once for it to be absolutely burnt into your brain. There was this one funny thing on uh, uh, Facebook at one time about this cat with these huge big eyes and it says, what has been seen cannot be unseen. People, that is the, I think, out of all the life lessons, the most important fact on the face of the earth. Something that you, you, you only have to see something once. You only have to have a visual of something once for that picture to be embedded in your brain for recall at any point in time. Okay, whether it be something good or whether it be something bad. I've seen some bad things in my life which I do not want to ever see again. However, the moment I think of that, the whole picture comes right back in my mind. Once something is in your brain, it doesn't ever go out. Okay, so your husband is being, getting bombarded by these visuals every single day of his life. Those are pictures that's embedded in his brain. Okay, so, um, okay, we'll stop it at that. Now, step number four. I think we're at step number four. For those of you guys who uh, are not lucky enough to have husbands that uh, actually work in a manly environment, okay, your husband is going to the office and he gets bombarded by the women that go to work as your husband goes to work and he's, this is what he sees. So Okay, so now that you've seen the pictures of what your husband sees on a daily basis at work, okay, then he comes home from work and all he sees is these women on their best behavior, okay. So he sees a woman that's always friendly, always doing everything he asks her to do. Uh, can you type me this? Can you call this person? Can you make an appointment for a meeting with this guy? Can Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And if they're in a, a, a smaller company, chances are they're on the first base um first name basis, right? So, yes, John, of course, John, no problem, John, okay? So he's getting all of these things and all this friendly little face, pretty little face, uh, cute little body, short little uh, mini skirt or whatever, and then he comes home, and what does he get at home? <laughs> Not what he gets at work. He gets a tired woman, a stressed woman, a woman who um, doesn't look the way she should be looking. Uh, she's, you know, I mean, this is true for everybody, even the ladies at work. Now, people, um, so now that you've seen all these visuals, okay, I want, I'm trying to get you guys to try and figure out a picture of where I'm going with this, okay? This is only the physical part of it, it's not even the emotional part of it, okay? So I'm starting with the physical part first. So now, if that is what your husband see, sees, that's not what he saw before you guys got married. You had a persona, you know, which you portrayed towards your husband before you got married. So then you get married. So I can tell you a couple of stories. Now, I'm not a... Um, a marriage expert, I'm not a marriage counselor, I'm not an um, a expert by any means, but I've, I've, I have some experience. I've been married for 23 years and I'm pretty sure a lot of my subscribers have been married for 50 years or 60 years or however long you can be married, <laughs> you know, until the day you die. Um, but here's the thing, out of, like literally, out of everybody that Johan and I grew up with, every single person 
that Johan grew up with all his friends in his circle, all the friends in my circle that we literally grew up with, got, you know, saw the people getting married or whatever. It's only me that stayed, uh, me and Johan that stayed married and one other couple, one other couple of Johan's school friends that's actually still married. Everybody else out there is either divorced or be going through a divorce or have been remarried or, you know, stuff like that. So that's why I'm having this discussion with you guys because a lot of people, you know, you, you get so comfortable with each other that you kind of let the flame die. And when you let the flame die, um, you're triggering on a uh, line, a fine line of your marriage is going down here, okay? Because once the physical is uh, not there anymore, um, there's no attraction. If there's no physical attraction, the only thing that your marriage is basically, and I'm not saying, oh my God, you should only be physical. People don't take my my spiel here and, and um, turn it around and go, oh, my husband loves me enough, you know, for who I am and for what a nice person I am and I don't have to dolly up all the time. That's not what I'm saying, <laughs> okay? So don't go attacking me on this video going, oh, all of these things. I'm just trying to uh, wake you guys up to something, okay? Because the, a very, uh, the, the, the a physical part of the marriage, and you guys can say whatever you want, okay? Uh, the seduction or the uh, sensual part of the marriage is... 50% as important, okay, as all the emotional stuff, okay? So if you have emotional issues and all kinds of other issues going and you only look pretty, well, that ain't going to help your marriage at all. I mean, you can look pretty, you can be married to the prettiest person on the earth, and if you're a pain in the ass or if you're a bitch, yeah, your prettiness is not going to stay pretty for very long, okay? So I can give you a couple of examples of things that, okay, now first of all, I want to quickly talk about male and female population. Now, I haven't upgraded my studies on this, but for interesting sake, or for interest sake, okay, a couple of years ago, I think it was in, in, in um, San Diego, I started doing this research on male and female, okay? Now, all of you guys must know by this time that uh, males die at a, young, a much younger age than females, and they think it's because it's work-related, stress-related, all of those kind of things, uh, as opposed to, f to women, and there's a couple of other things too, but here's the thing. In our teens, okay, the population of male versus female is pretty equal, okay? So it might be, say, 47 or 46 percent female, uh, 40, you know, and whatever's left over males. Like, it, it's pretty equal, okay? However, as we get older, when you start getting into your 20s and your 30s or whatever, the male population shrinks with every 10 years. So every decade, the male population shrinks, okay? By the time you're in, well, I think it's 45 and up, the, ma the male versus female population is one uh, guy for two and a half women, okay? And as you go up in age, uh, I think it's like 60 and up or something, it's one male for three or four females, okay? Now, this is a study that I've done, like, literally, I say three years ago. I don't know how that have changed. I don't there's another topic that I want to discuss at some point, but I want to make sure that I discuss, this, discuss it in enough details that I don't get every divorced woman out there coming and killing me or trying to explode me or explode my YouTube channel or something, right? But there's this really weird phenomenon about um, women getting divorced, okay? And obviously, the higher in age we go, the higher the divorce rate goes, okay? Some of them, some people, um, you know, there's a lot of people that stick through their marriages. I mean, their marriages is over long, long, long before they get divorced, okay? So, um, a, a lot of people do this, have this phenomenon, this is other phenomenon where people will actually stay in an unhappy marriage just to get their kids out of school. And then once their kids go off to college, then they, they get divorced, okay? <laughs> because they really have nothing in common with their, their spouses, and, you know, that's when the breakup happens. I mean, even on YouTube, you see it. Like a, a whole bunch of the girls that I've been subscribed to um, for the past three or four years have gotten divorced in the past three or four years, okay? So that is the phenomenon. And which age group are they in? It's our age group, 40s and up, okay? So here's something that you guys have to, to, to think about uh, with your marriage, okay? There are so many females out there, okay, that are looking for spouses or looking for other halves or something like that, okay? That if your marriage is not in a safe place or in a in a really good place, okay, it doesn't take much for a female to give a husband, the, the, a, a neglected husband, the attention that he needs and he'll fall just like that. Not that he wants to ever cheat on you and he loves you as much as he always did, but if there's... Um, 
things that's amiss in your marriage, okay, you are in danger of a manhunter catching your husband, okay, and before he knows it, it doesn't, it's not that he goes out seeking another woman, but if, if you're, if, you know, if another woman comes in and she fulfills the needs, because there's so many needs that you get in a marriage, there's emotional needs, psychological needs, physical needs, uh, mental needs, all kinds of needs th that you have in a marriage, right? If one of those things are amiss, okay, and it only takes one woman from another place to come and fulfill that need, and I have seen this numerous times, <laughs> because every single friend that we have has been divorced or remarried or divorced more than one time or something like that, and after years and years and years of discussions with these people, this is the funny things that I find out. You know about affairs and blah 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 and what went, what went before because here's the thing that's so funny a lot of the females okay that um, got married and they were married for a long, long time and they're going out of uh, uh, um, there's a bird right here I have three hanging baskets and that's why I'm looking up there's a bird right here bird's nest and the mommy's bringing food for the babies so every now and again I see a birdie flying into this little basket of fake flowers and the baby she feeds the baby so it's very cute Okay, so let's get back to, to females, okay? So I've seen women, okay, being in a marriage, and they're unhappy, and they look like crap. I have one example that I, I can, I have 600 examples that I can give you, but I knew this one lady that I met. When I saw her, I couldn't believe my eyes, because yes, she was a grandma, okay? She was a, a youngish grandma, but she looked like a grandma. She was in this marriage with, oh my God, they had so many issues in their family, it's not even funny. The children had issues, the grandchildren had issues, this one was seeing a psychologist, that one was seeing a psychologist. But she looked, she was, she had um, grayish, you know that, that uh, pepper, uh, peppercorn color uh, hair, okay? And she had it done like an old lady, it was always in little curlers, and she had the stiffly firm sprayed uh, hairdo and everything. Uh, never wore any makeup, just a little bit of lip gloss, you know. Um, no mascara, no nothing like that. She wore these old lady dresses, you know, like those dresses from the 60s and the 70s, but the big old dresses with the little flowery patterns on them that looks like curtains and things like that, okay? She was in an unhappy marriage. I mean, she was just basically, she was a mother and she was a, a grandmother, but she and she was a wife and she was everything, but she, was, she had lost her own personality somewhere along her, her marriage, okay? So we, we were in the same church as them. So after uh, knowing her for three years, and she was always the one cooking for the church. She was always cooking, cooking, cooking for everybody and making everybody happy, you know. And she always had this little, um, a, not a bib, what do you call a, a thing that you cook in, you know, to prevent your clothes from a little idiot box right here. Okay, she always used to wear those things. And I looked at her, and I kept on looking at her face, and I was, oh, she was overweight. I mean, a mega major overweight. She was a pretty typical old grandma, the way your grandma or my grandma used to look like, okay. And she was always cooking and baking and everything for the church or whatever. Anyway, so they left the church because they moved. I think two years later, I drove to the post office. This was all happening in Canada. I drove to the post office. And did I not drive past this woman that I recognized, but I had no clue who in hell she is. And I knew, I knew who she was, but I couldn't remember who she was. She was walking down the street with a little doggy, okay? And she had a beautiful blonde bob, shoulder length. She wore... Leathers. <laughs> I, know, I don't know where, I don't know why or how this happened, but she was a stunning woman, okay? So I drove past her, went to the post office, came back from the post office, went into Carp to, um, to the corner store to get some bread and whatnot, and there she was. So I guess she did a little doggy walk just before she went to the store. So I stood behind her, okay? And there she stood in front of me, and she looked, she was so sexy. I mean, people. <laughs> I kept on looking at her and I thought, man, this is an older woman and she's so well kept and everything. And she turned around and she sm smiled at me and I smiled at her and I smiled at her some more and she's like, Miranda? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, it's blah, blah. I'm like, what? <laughs> I could not believe my eyes. The transformation that this woman gone through after being in a horrible marriage, looking like a grandmother, switched around, became this hot ass, sexy female that is... Now three years older than when I've known her before for six years, okay? Now this phenomenon is not just to this woman. I have seen this over and over and over again. You know somebody on YouTube that just went through the whole same transformation. Now people, what I'm asking you is, why don't you do these things while you're married? Why do you wait until you get divorced, 
then you go and do all of these things to catch another man. And then when you get married to that man, you just take all your bag of potatoes into the new marriage, and then you go follow the same old path, okay? So it's very, very important to know that there are many of those females out there that have gotten divorced, and all of them uh, deal with divorce in different ways. They are dangerous women for your husband to be around. Some of them, not all of them. I'm not going on about divorced females. I have many, 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 believe you me, divorced female friends, okay? So all I'm saying is, a lots of times, you know, you can, you can kind of argue that, okay, but because the marriage was bad, she was not taking care of herself. And you can, you, can, you can do it any which way you want. But I want to give you guys kind of a warning that the first signs of getting too comfortable in your marriage and the flame dying out is when you start walking around looking like a bad lady every single day of your life when your husband comes home. Because as I've shown you the pictures, okay, you might look pretty when you go to work and if you think about it, is it really fair towards your husband if you dress up and look pretty and you go out in a public place where other men see you all day long and you look pretty for other, other men, but then when you come home you slough around and you look horrible, okay? That is not cool at all. It's not good for your marriage. It's not good for you. Believe you me. Because the longer you do it and the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it and the less you want to you, you know, uh, dress up anymore and the less you want to do anything about yourself when you're at home. And that is not right towards your husband because you are treating other men in public better than you are treating your own husband. And that is something that you guys need to think about. Now, there was something else that I think I'm going to do in another video. If you guys like this, I'm just playing around with these series. Like, if you guys like it, you got to tell me, and I'll keep going, right? Because there's another thing that we can discuss about, you know, divorcees and things that I've seen in my life with, you know, females and what happened to them, um, different ways of grieving after a divorce and blah, blah, blah. The thing is, though, people, divorce is one of the hardest things on the face of the earth. But keeping a marriage together and being happy is harder than getting divorced. If divorce was harder than keeping your marriage together, not so many people would have been divorced, okay? And our children, um, the next generation of children, are growing up with the idea that, oh yeah, you get married to anybody, you know, uh, love is just a temporary thing anyway, and then once it doesn't work out, you get divorced. Because that is what they see, the parents do. We get divorced and we get remarried and we get divorced and we get remarried. So our children don't grow up with the values that we were brought up with. Or I don't know about you guys, but my parents brought me up. My mom said, if you made your bed, okay, you sleep in it. Now, that is a, a, a very common, easy way uh, to explain things. For me, you make your bed and you sleep in it with regular troubles. However, there's two things that I totally, totally think is not fixable in a marriage, okay? One is if you have infidelity in, in your marriage. It doesn't matter how ugly you look or whatever. Once there's infidelity in your marriage, you can keep it together. You can maybe, you know, stay in the marriage and maybe someday with a lot of counseling or whatever get better, but you will never, ever in your life, ever, 100% trust your husband again. That's the one thing. The other thing that I, I think would never is never fixable in a marriage is abuse, either physical abuse or mental abuse, okay? So those two things are the two reasons that I think you can't fix it. If there's any of that going on in a, in, a, in, a, in a marriage, then you should get out of the marriage. However, talking about love and being in love, you know, people, I want you guys to think about something. Being in love, okay, is a feeling that you get. Think about that. It's a feeling, right? Being in love is a feeling. That feeling of, oh, that bird is so cute, she just brought another worm. That feeling of butterflies in your stomach and your face being all, you know, like flushed and your cheeks is all flushed and everything. That's the feeling of being in love. That feeling of excitement, that feeling of, what, of, of joy when you see the person, you know, that you love. However, I want you to think about something else. There's a difference between being in love and loving somebody. Loving somebody is not a feeling, it's a choice. When you make a choice to love somebody, you love them through bad times and good times, through sickness and in health, that's what that whole marriage thing is all about. I wonder if that's my pool guy. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about marriage and love and then the pool guy shows up. So I want you guys to think about this because I can make another video on being in love and whatever, but being in love... T take this again. Think about this very nicely. You guys can, you know, like think about it for a while. You can comment what you think. Being in love is a feeling. Loving somebody is a choice. And this w the series can continue. If you want me to continue with it, I will. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.